I purchased this 3D scanner secondhand because I wanted to save money. So with that in mind, I really didn't want to pay for a new gaming laptop powerful enough to go with it. But you know what? I didn't have to. Today, I'm going to show you how you can leave your existing desktop PC intact and in place and remotely use your 3D scanner elsewhere in your house. Or if the network is good enough, completely away from home. Ever since I got my race car, I've wanted a good 3D scanner, but I did want to do it on a budget. Previously, Miles greatly assisted on 3D scanning a classic car vent using his expensive Einscan HX. The results were easily good enough to replicate the part, but I didn't want to spend that much on a scanner and a dedicated laptop to go with it. I'm still a novice with my new 3D scanner, so this is not a review, but instead a guide on 3D scanning on the cheap. I've covered a few 3D scanners over the years, and for small things, let me point you towards this automated OpenScan Mini. For small objects, the results are truly fantastic. But ever since I got my race car, I've been looking for an additional 3D scanner that can scan much larger parts with good detail, but without breaking the bank. When shopping, I found a couple of videos really useful, like this one from HP Academy, and this one from Superfast Matt. They're both linked in the video description. I was tempted by the Revo Point Morocco, because it had an inbuilt screen that meant you didn't need a companion laptop, but based on the reviews that I saw, I ended up thinking that Einstar was a better bet. This retails for around a thousand US dollars new, and I got mine second hand, saving around a third of the price. It was a couple of hours drive away, but fortunately it seemed to be in excellent condition and have all of the included parts. We have the actual scanner in a rubbery protective case, the power and USB cable that go to a power brick, and on the other end combine into a single plug that goes into the scanner, several sheets of reflective scanning dots, and finally the calibration board that is surprisingly dense and heavy. So far so good, money saved and everything included and working. Because I chose the Einstar, that means I needed an accompanying computer, and it needed to be beefy too, with the key item here most likely being the dedicated graphics card. I've got an old gaming laptop with a dedicated GPU, but as soon as you try to start the Einstar software, you halt it in your tracks with this message and after you click confirm, the software shuts down. It's not like you can use a lesser computer and just have a slower experience. Luckily for me, my editing PC meets the specs comfortably. So I installed the software and plugged in the scanner and did a half assed 3D scan of this kettlebell just to confirm that it was in fact working. So I've got a suitable PC downstairs in one part of the house and I can connect the scanner directly to it, but the trouble is, that pretty much everything I want to scan is upstairs in the opposite part of the house. I don't want to buy a special gaming laptop, I can't bring the race car downstairs, and it's way too much effort to dismantle and take upstairs the editing PC. Luckily, there is another solution called USB network tunneling, and it works very well. On Superfast Matt video was this great comment from Segan09, talking about tunneling the USB device over the local network. I got googling and found this post from the engineer09 on Reddit. It had instructions on this method, specifically related to 3D scanning. This method works best over your local network with wired ethernet for the best bandwidth and speed. And you will need a second device, typically a laptop, but it doesn't need to be very powerful at all because it won't be running the 3D scanning software. In short, this is how it works. The 3D scanner is plugged into that computer. The data from the USB cable then travels through your local network to the beefy computer running the 3D scanning software. Typically, this tunneling software has two components, a USB server running on the remote device, and then a USB client running on the target device. And when the connection is successful, the target device simply thinks the 3D scanner is plugged directly into it. So for instance, I'm sitting now at my downstairs computer, the scanning software detects the device is plugged in, and if we look in Device Manager, we can see it's sitting there. Basically, this computer doesn't know any different. I'd like to point out at this stage that I'm using this method on an Einstar, but it should work for any other 3D scanner. In fact, it doesn't even need to be a 3D scanner, any USB device. For instance, here I'm accessing the webcam on the laptop in the garage from my downstairs computer. So what are our options? The Reddit post suggested virtual here as the option. This one is made in Australia and the cheapest with the full license being 49 US dollars. But like everything else you'll see, it has a trial period so you can test if it's working. As we saw in our diagram, we'll need two pieces, 
Firstly, the USB server, on my case, going on the laptop up in the garage. And then secondly, the USB client going on the computer with the 3D scanning software. Firstly, the server, which doesn't need to be installed. There's simply an executable that you open and then click on start. And that's it. You don't get any other information about what USB devices are plugged in and available to share. The client is also an executable and does have more of an interface and options. If the server is not detected, you'll need to get the IP address, add the server manually, and then any connected devices should appear where you can right click and then say use this device. And we can see here on the downstairs computer that the Einstar device is detected. My patron Boots found this free and open source program called USB IP Client for Windows, but as it states, it is not for production use and can cause a blue screen of death. That was a deal breaker for me, but I've linked it below for those more willing to take the plunge. This next bit is confusing because we have two pieces of software with the exact same name. Firstly, USB over network, with this one by Electronic Team US. You can buy a single lifetime license for 160 US dollars, so quite a step up, but that license will allow you to port through 10 USB devices at once. You can trial it for 14 days, with the only restriction being that you can only share one device. This one is available on a lot of platforms and has only a single file to download and install for both client as well as server. On the remote computer, we make sure we've set it to local USB devices, plug in and then click share. And if needed, we can click the cog to get to the settings for that particular device. On the computer with the 3D scanning software, we want to change to the remote USB devices tab. The device should then be listed and we can click connect. It's worth noting that this server was automatically detected for me. Now we have the other option called USB over network, but this one is by Fabulatech. We can buy a one-off license per seat, and that's priced at 150 US dollars. It's a little bit cheaper than the last one, but the price goes up as you add the amount of USB devices you want to be able to tunnel through the network. There's a year's worth of updates for free, but you need to pay for anything beyond that. With this one, compared to the other options, the price quickly becomes quite steep. This one is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac, and we need to download and install separate software for the server as well as the client. This one also has a two week trial, and again, only one USB device can be connected by the client. This is what the server software looks like on the remote side. We plug in the device, right click and share it. And now on the client side, after we've added the IP address of the server, the device should be sitting there ready for us to right click and connect. One quick tip for a problem I came up against was every now and again, the scanner would get in a loop where it was connecting and disconnecting repeatedly. And what worked for me was simply restarting the Xstar Shining 3D software and that magically fixed everything. Out of these, I preferred the electronic team version of USB over network. No, it wasn't the cheapest, but for me, it was the easiest to set up and use. Let's refine our setup. So now we can scan remotely, but in its current iteration, this is pretty much useless. And that's because we have no real time feedback from the scanning software to tell us what we're doing. We're basically flying blind. The solution here is to use remote desktop software. Basically, you can control one computer remotely from another. As an example, here you see me controlling the downstairs computer on the upstairs laptop as if I was sitting right there. And there's plenty of commercial options available, but I wanted to go free. I tried the official Microsoft version, but I just couldn't get it to work. I was trying to tweak it from the command line using random tutorials and it just wasn't worth it. So instead I switched to Chrome Remote Desktop. This is also free, supported on everything, and since I already had a Google account, was super easy to set up. On the computer you want to control remotely, in this case the beefy one with the 3D scanning software, you install the client and then set up a pin. On the remote computer, the one that the 3D scanner is connected to, you click on that device, enter the pin, and then the desktop will appear. You can click to control it as if you were sitting at it, and sounds will come through as well. Depending on where the laptop is, it's a bit of a pain looking over your shoulder instead of directly at what you're trying to scan. But you can easily install the same piece of software on your phone or tablet, have it next to the scanner, and be able to see exactly what's going on more conveniently. So with this setup, we now have the benefit of seeing exactly what's happening on the scanning software from either laptop or phone. So with this in mind, how close can we get to that 3D scanner with inbuilt screen? I initially found this phone clamp GoPro mount by Amalusta, and then this Einstar handle by Garage Tinkerer. And to me, it looked like there was room to mount the phone in landscape to the top of this handle. So I imported the two into Onshape and extended the handle to have the other half of the GoPro mount. I've got a tutorial linked below on how to modify STLs like this. 
we simply have a bolt and lock nut to put these two parts together. The handle then mounts onto the scanner as per the original instructions. The phone is clamped and the whole thing ends up being pretty tidy in my opinion. That's what I ended up with, but how well does it actually work? So how about a test project? And I previously made this set of custom jaws for a bike rack. But since then I've changed my bike and it no longer fits. This part of the bike is an unusual shape and I needed to spray it with 3D scanning spray to help the scanner pick it up. And that gave me a good enough result to pick up the required geometry. I converted and imported this into Onshape and used it as a reference for this loft to represent that section of the tube. The two TPU jaws were then modified and reprinted to suit with that lofted section used to make a cut. And the new printed parts are a perfect fit which means the scale of the 3D scan was spot on as well. As you'd expect, I also did a quick scan of part of the bodywork of my race car and performance of the scanner to me seems really good. To get a bit more reach, I've bought a lot longer ethernet cable for the upstairs laptop and to untether myself from the power point, I've made up a matching cable that connects to a 12 volt power bank and that power bank will easily fit in my pocket. This gives me a bit more portability within the house. And the phone screen is plenty big to see what's happening back on the scanning software. Scanning frame rate seems perfectly fine as well. But can we take it further as foretold by the Engineer 09 using a VPN to scan from outside the house and our local network. So our beefy computer stays at home, but everything else goes on the road. I have OpenVPN set up on my router, so I installed the same client on my laptop and then used my mobile as a Wi-Fi hotspot so the laptop had internet connection. In this configuration, technically everything worked. The computer back at home was able to recognize the Einstar and Chrome Remote Desktop let me control and view that computer. But as was posted on Reddit, the frame rate was extremely low and not really usable. Everything ground to a halt, even with a strong 5G connection. If this seems like too much cost and hassle, I think it compares favorably to spending the money and setting up a whole new gaming laptop. Thanks to the Engineer 09 for their post. I couldn't have made this video without it. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy budget 3D scanning. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.